What's up guys, how are you all doing? Hey, welcome to another video. Today we'll be looking at how to control some garden RGB LEDs by Sylvania. We're gonna be doing that with the Home Assistant platform utilizing a Nortec Zigbee controller. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in, stay tuned because it's coming up right here, right now on MI Sperry. Okay guys, so what we've got for our kit here is we've got to start with this Sylvania Lightify. It's a little garden, uh, let's see, what's it called? Garden Mini Spot RGB. Basically they're a Z-Wave controlled uh, little RGB garden lights. So we're gonna be using this uh, Z-Wave controller. Um, this is the, uh, oh, I think it's like Nortec or something like that. I can't remember the name of it. Uh, Nortec, yeah, because Nortec is one that will work with our uh, home assistant. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get this installed to my Raspberry Pi that has home assistant running on it, and we'll see if we can't get it configured. Now, in the meantime, I'll plug that in here in a minute, but we'll take a look at our little uh, guys here. So inside this box, looks like we've got some little bit of some instructions, Got a little quick start guide with some information. Of course, we're not gonna use that because we're gonna do our own hub. But to look at what the stuff looks like, these looked quite interesting. So you got a couple different uh, deals. What is this? Oh, FCC stuff, you know, of course, good old FCC. So these, I believe, are the little lights. Get the right end open here. Yeah, there we go. So here's these little garden lights. Let's see if I can dump them out here. Okay. So, you can stab them into the ground. I think there's even a spot where you could like drill holes and like screw them down to something like they can unsnap from this. Like, it seems pretty cool. So like here's a little thing of screws if you wanna do that route. Or you can just stick them into the ground. So it looks like it's got a little, little controller here. Contain FCC, ID, zone home. Okay, so there's some, some information for the little, that's, I'm guessing this is probably the wireless thing. Then it comes with a little power pack, I think. That's what this is. Let's check that out. Oh, come on. There we go. There it is. There's a little 120 volt uh, power pack. Man, this stuff is huge. Anyway, but so, and then this just, you know, plugs in there. And everything has little gaskets on it, so it's watertight, it's weatherproof. Um, so that way, this looks like it's sealed and potted. Uh, so everything's all weatherproof and everything, so should be good for outdoor use, which is what we will do with it. All right, so let me get some stuff put together and uh, we'll, get it, uh, we'll get it wired up here. Okay guys, so now we're gonna look at uh, doing the software portion of this. So you'll have to log into your Haas IO, uh, basically just terminal into it with SSH. Um, check out my previous videos, seeing how you download the SSH uh, component and things like that. But anyway, once you get in there, you're uh, gonna basically check out where uh, the device is, you should see if you CD to your device directory. If we do an ls-l, you should see these two main ones, USB 0 and USB 1, okay? If you're using, <clears throat> excuse me, the Nortec device that I'm using, it basically has both the Zigbee and the Z-Wave. And I think I said uh, Z-Wave in the beginning. <clears throat> I meant to be, I meant Zigbee. This has been uh, controlled by Zigbee, okay, not Z-Wave. So, but anyway, it has both. That's why I, I, I stumbled across, stumbled upon that. Uh, but it's Zigbee is the one that we're looking for. Now, to determine which one is which, um, I just have it written down here. Um, you, you can, you know, basically test it, but what mine was, was USB 1 was the Zigbee portion of the controller and USB 0 is the Z-Wave portion. So <clears throat> that's what you got to remember, this TTY. TTY USB 0 is the, um, what did I say, the Zigbee, or no, the Z-Wave. USB 0 is Z-Wave, USB 1 is the Zigbee. Okay, so now for the little lights that I chose, they are a Zigbee. Um, I'll be doing some Z-Wave stuff, that'll be in the next video, but um, this is the Zigbee portion of it. So we're gonna be using TTY USB 1. So make sure that shows up. If it doesn't show up, if you plug it in and it does not show up, just simply go in to your, uh, ras or into your, uh, 
yeah, the Raspberry Pi that has the Home Assistant on it, and just restart the uh, software. You just go to Configuration, go to General, and then down here under Server Management, you will hit the Restart button, okay? And then that'll restart the whole script and everything, and then you should be able to then do the uh, the USB thing, or at least go to your device and do a listing for it, and you should be able to see it. Once you've gotten that, once you see that that's there, it should have automatically installed... If not, I'll show you. Uh, I'll show you how to do it. A lot of times, it'll automatically install a uh, <clears throat> configuration down here. That's the ZHA. If it doesn't, then you have to do this to your config. So what you'll do is you'll come over to your configurator. You know, just like uh, let's see, I'll show you. I have it in my Haas IO. There's my configurator. So you launch your configurator, and inside you're going to put the ZHA, you're going to put this. So ZHA and then your USB path is going to be the path to that uh, TTY USB 1, okay? Because we're doing Zigbee, okay? ZHA is for the Zigbee uh, Home Assistant, okay? So you'll put the put that in there. And then you just need to designate a, a database path. What the database is, is basically what houses all the configurations for your different Zigbee uh connected devices is all it is so it's not at first i got confused i thought it was a database i had to download or something no no it's just where will it write the zigbee.db file so you want to put it in a place where it has permission to do that so the best place is just that config folder the normal config folder that all this stuff is in you know like your configuration yaml is in the config folder so you want to just make sure and put it there so i just do a config and then it's called zigbee.db okay and you would think that's all you have to do. Um, what I would do is I put this in if you do not show in your configuration, uh, if you do not show the ZHA, I would then, uh, I would add this to the configuration YAML file. Okay, save it. And then come in here and hit general and then restart your server. Okay, now it all won't work just yet. Okay, so once it restarts, you should see then in that listing, if we go back, you should see the ZHA. However, it, you'll get some errors. If you look at the uh, error log, you'll get errors uh, saying that it's 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 trying to access TTY AMA0 or something like that, which is the wrong device. That's because there's a bug. There's a little bit of a bug. There's one other place that gets built that has a default uh, TTY device in it that you have to change. If you go back to your configurator, okay, we're going to go to our folder structure and we're going to go into our config directory, but we're going to go into this dot storage directory, okay? So config dot storage, and then you're going to look for core entities, okay? I'm pretty sure it's the core entities. Let me make sure. Yeah, core entities. Scroll all the way to the bottom and you'll see that there is a domain ZHA. And what you'll see in here is you'll see that there's two, there's USB path and there's another uh, title for the USB path. So what you want to do is you have to update these. Usually this will be that TTY AMA zero or whatever. You need to change this to the Zigbee one. Okay. So which is our USB one. And then I change the title here to USB one as well so that everything stays consistent. Save that. And then we're going to restart one more time. Come back, go to your configuration, general, and restart. Once that restarts, you shouldn't see any more errors in your log file. You should be good to go. So how do we pair up a device? All right, so behind me, I've got my lights all plugged in and ready to go. What uh, what these do is they sit and they blink, or not blink, but they, they're on solid uh, because they're in like a pairing mode. <clears throat> so what you do is you will go back to your uh, configuration, sorry, Go back to your configuration and you'll go down to the ZHA configuration, okay? And, uh, no thanks. Then in here, okay, mine's different now because in here you will have something that will talk about the permit, okay? It'll say permit on it and you'll click a button that's called permit, okay? <clears throat> Let's see if, hold on, maybe I've just got it too big. Okay, let's make this smaller. There we go. There it is. Okay, you'll have something to start with that'll say permit. You click the permit button and it should load up this basically and you should see your device get recognized. Like mine, I'm showing the Osram. It'll basically pop up just like this. It'll pop up and look exactly like this. Okay, so when you hit permit, it will it'll bring up. Now that's the same thing with this add devices. If I need to add additional ones, I'll click add devices. 
but you definitely want to do the permit thing. And you can check out the instructions on Home Assistant. They give you a little bit of an idea of how to run that command. So once you get it, it comes up here all set up. You can give it uh, a name or whatever you want it to do. Um, I can reconfigure the device, remove the device, uh, add more devices, however you want to do it. I didn't create any types of areas or anything or any clusters or anything uh, fancy. I just added it in. Okay. So that's all you got to do to get the device to pair up. And then once I, once I did the permit thing and it paired up, the lights blinked like three times. Okay. And so that let me know that it paired up properly. So now we need to add it to our overview. Okay. So just like I have it there, um, I'm going to go ahead and delete it and show you that whole, that whole process. So let me see if I can. Uh, let's see. Let's go here, here. Oh, wait, wait, wait. We got to put it into edit mode. Okay. So let me move me around. Oop, whoops. That's the whole entire screen. I got to move me around. All right. Let's put me down here. Okay. So now that I'm down there, um, let me take and get this stuff situated here. So we're going to come up here and we're going to go to configure UI. So that puts us into UI configuration mode. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this one just so I can recreate it and show you what it looks like. So we're going to come down here and we're going to click our little add button. Since these are lights, I'm going to choose the light. So light name, I'll name it garden light. And then entity we choose from the drop down. Well, there's the Osram light. So we click on that. That gives us this theme. Uh, I'll just leave the default theme and then hit save. That's literally it, guys. Okay, and now I can turn this on and off. And so let me uh, let me plug this in over here so I can uh, bring it up on uh, camera and you guys can see it. Okay, guys. So we got it all on the bench here. I'm just have these laid out. We'll go put them in the yard here for too long. But basically, press the light button and there they are. So there's all the little lights. Now, the cool thing about this, I can play with the brightness of it. If I want to make them brighter, I can play with the brightness of it. Also, if I want to make the uh, color change, I can hit this little button here. And then you got this color change. I'm going to see if I can zoom in on this a little more so you can see it on the phone. Now I can pick any color I would like to change it to. I can go blue. And you can play with the color temperature. You can play with like any of it. We can even go white if we wanted to, or at least as close to white as possible with RGB LEDs. But there you go. Okay, guys, so thank you so much for checking this out. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial on the Zigbee using the Nortec uh, USB device. If you want to check out the different materials and things I use, you can check out the uh, list down below. Check out my affiliate links. They'll help out the channel as well as give you guys the uh, the information that you need or at least the, the stuff that you need. Uh, definitely check me out on all the different social medias. Got all the links down there in the description. Check me out on Reddit. I try to pro post there at least once a day, uh, either whether it's posts from me or if it's just me cross posting interesting things that I think uh, are interesting for you guys to check out. Um, also, I've got some uh, entries for some instructable contests that will be coming up that ought to be pretty fun. Ought to be some fun stuff to make here on the channel, um, as well as some other things uh, coming down the pike. We'll probably be doing something with a Z-Wave uh, controller that we'll be doing. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Check that out, as well as definitely comment down below. I need some ideas. I'm starting to run low on ideas, so I definitely need your input down in the comments below. So definitely let me know some different ideas for the channel, different things you might want to see. In fact, this video was a uh, viewer requested as someone was struggling with the Zigbee uh, implementation. So hopefully this has helped you guys out. So as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Hit that like button. Go down there and subscribe. Also, make sure that you ring that bell because otherwise you probably won't uh, know what's going on on the channel. So guys, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Ha <laughs>